Hey everybody, can you all hear me? Cool, looks like we are rolling. Thanks everybody for joining. Uh, it's gonna be myself and hopefully uh, Matt will be joining us very soon. He is unfortunately stuck in just a little bit of traffic. Um, so before we answer questions, I wanted to call out one thing. Uh, as you all may have seen, uh, we were asking for help uh, with Coinbase. So Coinbase has told us last week uh, that they are open and interested in integrating unstoppable domains uh, into Coinbase wallet, but they want to first hear from users. Uh, so we shared a tweet. Uh, thanks a bunch to everybody who uh, already messaged them. I think we already got, I don't know, I counted like over 70 messages or something like that. So already huge response, really appreciate it. Uh, we're going to share that link again. If you all can all please, uh, please go ahead and uh, and tweet at that link. Uh, add your uh, .crypto or your .zil domain. Uh, crypto or your .zil domain. Let them know that uh, you want to, uh, to integrate us. So that link is going in right now. Here, let's just, yeah, perfect. Um, cool. All right. So I'm going to jump into some questions. Uh, we're also going to uh, going to go through some topics. Uh, all right. All right. Cool. So the first question is: uh, When using the website builder, how is the website viewable to others? Do you need to use a DAP browser? Uh, so the way that it's going to work for viewing websites is. You can use a browser that Unstoppable Domains will be releasing. Uh, more on that very soon. Uh, you'll be able to use a browser extension. Uh, there are browser extensions being worked on for lots of different browsers. Uh, or you'll be able to use a native integration with a larger browser. Uh, so we told you all that 2020 was going to be the year for uh, the decentralized web. Uh, there's a lot of stuff coming. Uh, not a lot of huge announcements right at this moment. Uh, but there's going to be a lot of different ways to do it. Uh, not in DAP browsers initially, um, but, it's a, but it's a really good question because any of you who have been playing around with DAP browsers and Coinbase Wallet or Trust Wallet or all those others have probably realized, hey, you know, my wallet is basically, is basically my browser too. Um, so they could. So this is another direction uh, after they start supporting blockchain domains for payments that wallets with DAP browsers can also show websites. So completely new business for them, completely new direction, a whole bunch of new ways that people can get access to the decentralized web. So yeah, great question. Um, when will premium.crypto domain start? Uh, so there's going to be an announcement on this very soon. Um, as we mentioned before, we are working on this. We've been doing a whole bunch of uh, a whole bunch of upgrades to our system. After we launched .crypto, we went and spent a little while uh, cleaning up the e-commerce store. Hopefully you all have noticed uh, that doing searches and things like that on the website are a lot faster. Uh, that's a result of a huge effort uh, on the part of our development team to, uh, to upgrade everything. Uh, so premium domains coming very soon. We needed to do those, uh, those upgrades first. All right. Uh, so what is more important to the DWeb ecosystem, browser integrations or wallets? This is a really good question. So I think the short answer is the direction that this is going uh, is that wallets and browsers aren't really that different. Wallets are already turning into browsers. Browsers are already turning into wallets. Uh, it's kind of weird to have an application that doesn't have access to a wallet. Like if you're in an application, you're probably going to want to buy something. So I think the future is is that you know kind of you know, most applications are going to have wallets. Uh, the idea is is that the power comes from both. The power comes from having the ability to pay, uh, but also have the ability to see content. So I've got the stuff I want to sell you, uh, and then I've got the way that you can pay me. So the two are together, um, and it's important for the two to be together. Uh, so wallets uh, for the payment side are the kind of crypto native applications that are good places to start with. Uh, so that's the reason why you've seen us focus there first. Uh, but browsers are a huge piece of it, and I'm sure you all have noticed that you know, Brave Browser, 
Opera Browser, there are several others. Um, why did you pick Ethereum for Dark Crypto? Well, Ethereum is the most mature smart contract blockchain. And by mature, I mean that it has uh, been live for several years in production, has been used for a lot of applications, uh, is uh, predictable, has a lot of developer tools available, so it's very easy uh, to build stuff, uh, and it has the integrations. So if you all noticed, when we went live with .crypto, uh, you were able to store domains, manage domains, all through DApp browsers. That's because uh, Web3 libraries are standardized across all these different applications uh, for Ethereum. So this is the benefit of having a mature ecosystem is that on day one, .crypto worked for management inside of Coinbase Wallet, Trust Wallet, uh, IAM Token, several others without us even having to do any sort of special integration with them. Uh, it's worked. You could store your domain using their DApp browser. So that's kind of one of the superpowers. Oh. oh uh, you were also able to have .crypto domains listed on any uh, open exchange that supports ERC-721 tokens, which is what .crypto domains are. So that's a big benefit of having, uh, of having a network with all these users already. Uh, has anyone been accepted to the community grant program? Uh, so yes, I know it, we've been a little quiet on this. Uh, we do have projects. Uh, we are getting ready. Uh, we're at the sort of later stage of it, so you should expect to see uh, some of the first announcements uh, coming very soon there. If Google wants to implement uh, unstoppable domains, do they have to implement it in Chrome uh, or in their search engine? So this is a really good question. Uh, these are two separate things. Uh, so the first thing is being able to uh, view a website. So you want to view a website inside of the browser that you're used to using. So it's great if Chrome browser supported blockchain domains, and you could just type in a .crypto domain or a .zill domain, just like a .com, and it worked. That would be amazing. We absolutely hope they do that. We are reaching out to see if there's interest there, and we do think that eventually, uh, even the biggest browsers are going are, are gonna to want to support the decentralized web. But for now, it's probably going to be Chrome extensions, uh, if you want to use Chrome in order to see these websites. Separately, uh, we want these websites to show up in search engines. Now, Google is, of course, the biggest, uh, the most mature. You know, so from their perspective, it's probably going to be something they do once they feel a little bit more confident that there's demand. So they're going to want to see some websites. So we don't expect Google.com search engine to be the first. Uh, but there's a lot of alternative search engines. There's a lot of search engines that are uh, very focused on crypto and very focused on uh, privacy and decentralized web tech. So there's a lot of interest. Uh, I would look at some of the alternative browsers. That's where I would expect us to see it uh, to see it starting. We're actually also working on this as well, working on uh, helping to make it easier for search engines to support uh, and index decentralized websites. So uh, you'll even see some RFP stuff from us uh, around this subject. Because what we really want is we really want to have it be open and easy uh, so that 5, 10, 20 different search engines could all uh, go and uh, go and uh, index these websites. Uh, so with UD being a one-time purchase, it could very quickly lead to abandoned and dead domains. People don't manage their domain and lose the key. Any thought about time locks? Uh, it doesn't really matter. Um, yeah, it sucks if you lose your domain, of course, and we don't want that to happen. Um, but the idea of having dead domains out there um, just doesn't really matter. Um, you know, there, There's kind of a almost an endless number of names if you wanted to kind of keep getting more and more complex with them. It's not as if we're gonna run out. Uh, so it's just, kind of a, it's just kind of a solution, I guess, searching for a problem as we see it. Uh, all that kind of stuff is, is, is not necessary. Uh, if anything, it actually makes it a little bit more uh, risky for the user. So it's much more important to us to be able to ensure that everybody completely owns their asset forever. Um, has control of it forever. Uh, there's no element of uh, renting it or anything like that. In the traditional domain world, you've got this subscription model, uh, which means that you rent your domain from somebody. And then you have to worry about the registry that you're renting it from. Uh, what happens to them in the future? Um, what if they go out of business? Uh, what if they get acquired? Uh, what if they raise prices 10x or 100x? or uh, or whatever. And then in the case of time locks, what if I forget? What if it's too complicated 
uh, and hard for me to be able to access my domain. Uh, all of that stuff is just, it's not how crypto works in general. In general, you know, you have Bitcoin, you have it in your wallet, it's yours, free and clear, no one can do anything with it. Uh, we think that's a better framework for domains, that you completely control them. Uh, yes, you could lose it. Yes, that would suck. Um, but it's much more important for you to own your asset uh, free and clear forever, no questions. Doesn't matter what happens to UD. Doesn't matter what happens to the registry. As long as Ethereum, the blockchain itself, is okay, your domain is there. So long answer. Uh, we've thought about this a lot. Um, we really think that anything that could allow a domain to be taken away from somebody uh, is a security hole. And it should just be eliminated um, because it's not safe. Um, could you appoint brand ambassadors for unstoppable domains by region? We would love that. Um, you know, I think that you know we're you know we are very interested in promoting uh, and getting the word out all over the world. I think already this has happened where you know community members have taken various roles. Uh, if you have ideas for how to reach out things that you might do, campaigns, uh, et cetera, et cetera, in your area, um, please let us know. Um, yeah, we would love, uh, we'd love to hear your ideas. Um, will Unstoppable Domains always focus on IPFS or is the communication with other decentralized storage networks? Great question. We are network agnostic. We've been blockchain agnostic. We're cryptocurrency agnostic. We are storage network agnostic. There are a ton of great storage networks out there. Now, IPFS has the most uh, developer interest right now. Um, that's where most of the action is. That's the reason why we started with IPFS, but we're already looking at several others. And the way that we think this should work for you, the user, is that when you want to store content, you store it and launch it on multiple storage networks, not just multiple devices on a storage network, but multiple networks, because why not? Why not be even more secure where you have uh, protection across a bunch of these different networks? So. Great question. That's one we've been thinking about a lot. Uh, you'll see most of the IPFS right now, but you're going to see a lot more, uh, a lot more different networks soon. Uh, will domains be able to be used as an email address like other web hosting services? So you can always connect uh, traditional tools uh, to these domains. There's ways to do that. Uh, there are projects that are actually working on this, uh, even with UD domains. Um, so this could be a useful feature in the short term. I think you'll also see a more decentralized approach that maybe works a little bit different than traditional email uh, coming soon. So I would also just kind of uh, keep your eyes open for that. It may not go uh, exactly in the same direction as, uh, as email has done. Uh, when will the problem with MetaMask and Ledger be solved? I know this, one's, I know this one has been pretty awkward, guys. Um, we're uh, uh, apologies for that. Uh, we are still working on it. There are kind of issues uh, on multiple sides uh, in terms of you know, what we need to do, but we are working on it, and we will. Um, you know, it's, a, it's a top priority for us, and uh, we'll be we'll keep giving you updates on it. Uh, will there be more templates on the website builder? Uh, yeah, definitely. Not only that, um, we want you all to build templates. We don't want to build all the templates. Uh, every template that's needed for the for the internet to be decentralized. So please, uh, please uh, throw out some ideas. You know, we would love to we'd love to help you launch templates that you think people would use. Outside of ENS, who is the biggest competitor to unstoppable domains? Uh, well, I'd say Verisign. I'd say the owner of .com. You know, that's the market that we're after, ultimately. Uh, whatever's happening in the crypto world regarding blockchain domains is pretty small, it's pretty early. We're in the first you know, couple of years of this. Um, the bigger market is the traditional domain market. The traditional domain market is tens of billions of dollars in assets, in digital assets. Uh, they're sitting on a centralized server somewhere. Uh, they don't function for payments. They have these subscriptions. They can be taken away. They're very easy to be censored. Uh, they're, they're the old tech. We can replace all of that with an open internet. So that's ultimately the competitor. That's, where, that's what we're out to do. That's what we're out to replace. Uh, so yeah, anything that's kind of happening in the blockchain world is 
you know, small potatoes. It's, you know, we, at, at this point, you know, we should be working to help uh, rise all of, all of these systems. There's really uh, no reason for the, the crypto community to be fighting with each other. The much bigger market is this, uh, is this centralized, centralized asset registry. Are there any plans for an Ethereum blockchain explorer integration similar to the ViewBlock integration for Zillica? So great news there. Uh, ViewBlock is the block explorer. So ViewBlock is, uh, has just gone live with uh, .crypto. So you can now search .crypto domains on ViewBlock. You can find your IPFS hashes. You can do all the things that you could do uh, with the .zill domains. I believe it's all live now. I was playing with it over the past couple of days. So I think it's, uh, I think it's already, it already works. Uh, let us know if you see any issues there. Uh, what is the cost of IPFS for users? So uh, IPFS uh, by default doesn't have a cost. Uh, what's happening right now is, is there are like enterprise like pinning services that you can pay and then those are kind of giving you really good uptime. But there's also ways to just incentivize you know, users, visitors of your website to store it. So there's going to be a lot of different ways. Some websites are going to, you know, pay much more like traditional hosting in order to ensure that they have really high uptime. Uh, others are going to pay small amounts of money to lots of people. Others are just going to convince people to store and share their website because they believe in it. Um, so a lot of different ways that uh, this can be done. Uh, how about DuckDuckGo implementing UD domains? Uh, have you contacted them? So uh, without getting into any, you know specific conversations that may have been happening with uh, specific players, uh, we are talking to uh, some of the alternative search engines that we think are philosophically aligned. Uh, of course, you know, DuckDuckGo is, DuckDuckGo is amazing. We love, you know, they're, they're privacy centric. Uh, it's a great product. It's a great company. Um, so they're obviously top of mind. Uh, but we are talking to several alternative search engines that we think are philosophically aligned. Uh, and we expect that we should see some, some pickup here in 2020. Uh, it's not a huge. It's not very different from what they're already doing. It's just kind of a question of you know, hey, are there are there websites here that people are excited about? If yes, you know, most of these apps are, are pretty excited to you know to to share it. So that's that's kind of the that's kind of the that's kind of the criteria. So we as a community have a pretty clear task, which is make awesome websites that people want to check out, and then it shouldn't be very hard. Is there a future for dynamic websites uh, on decentralized web? Yes, yes, absolutely. Uh, there is. Uh, it's a bit harder than static, so we're starting with the things that are easy. Um, but ultimately, this is stuff that we're going to need help with, that there's going to be a lot of different builders uh, that are going to build the tools to make this stuff work. So it's not going to be just us. There's going to be all kinds of plugins, continuous integration, and various other things. Hello. All right. Matt, What's going on, Brad? Uh, yeah. So Matt was uh, stuck in a little bit of a little bit of traffic here. So I thought maybe we would go through a few more questions, and then um, if you were open, we could do a little do a little demo too after that. Yeah, that's, that's fine. good. Yep. Cool. All right. Uh, any plans to add fiat currency to domains? Uh, so yeah, we've actually had several conversations uh, of this. There's ways to do this. There is a company called Wire. Uh, that makes it very easy for you to start with to receive cryptocurrency and essentially have it automatically uh, sold and then transferred to your bank account. Um, so that's something that we've chatted about that we've chatted about and that we can uh, we can and will uh, add eventually. Uh, will unstoppable domains buy other companies competitors? Uh, no immediate plans. Um, we're pretty focused on our on our current team, but uh, who knows who knows what what may happen in the future. Uh, what options do I have to upload a decentralized video of myself uh, talking on my Unstoppable Domains website? You can do it now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, we've had a few people that already have done that. If you go to the slash browser page, I'm a little late here, so I don't know if we've talked about it already. Um, <laughs> yeah, so you'll see in just a second, there's people that have already put uh, sites up and videos of themselves. So uh, it's totally possible today. How do I get a UD t-shirt? <laughs> That's a good question. Um, we should work on that. So I just, I literally just got this 
um, uh, this past week. We will have some at East Denver. So if you're at East Denver, we'll be handing out t-shirts. Uh, that's our first uh, print. So we have a couple different versions. We're trying to figure out which one we like. And then I'm sure we'll start giving them out in conferences and, and other ways after that. So we're just getting started on the swag. So thanks for asking. Uh, what happens if a .crypto address offers illegal content through IPFS and a legislator requires the data of the owner of the address from UD? So we don't have any specific information other than email address uh, and whatever else you attach to your domain. So that's and, the only information that we have. And payment information, right? Like you pay with a credit card. So uh, be careful if you want to protect your privacy. You're going to have to take steps on your side to make sure that, that, that works for you. But it is totally possible. How big is the Unstoppable Domains team now, and how many domains have been registered to date? So I uh, actually just got uh, some numbers this morning. So I'm proud to announce that we have crossed the 200,000 registration mark uh, sometime here in the last week. Um, that's across .zill and .crypto. So uh, that's the domain registration number. We're pretty proud about that. Uh, we're on a great trajectory here. I'm feeling confident that we'll hit 1 million registrations by the end of this year. So um, that would be a huge accomplishment for us. If you look at the top uh, 10 TLDs on the planet, I think number 10 has something like 7 million registrations. So we'd really like to get there sooner rather than later. Um, and we're, we're headed on that path. And uh, there was another part of that question that I may have missed. What was that? The team? Oh, the team. Yeah. So uh, we're just over 20 people on the team. Um, it, it's, it's an imperfect answer because we have some people who are full-time and some people who are part-time, but it's basically 20 full-time people plus uh, another five or so uh, part-time contractors um, working with our team currently. And will Unstoppable Domains branch out their services to become a web hosting service? So just to kind of keep in mind here, the hosting part is going to be going to uh, decentralized storage networks like IPFS, but we are building tools to make it easy for you to build and launch websites. So like effectively, yes, you're going to have an easy way to launch websites uh, through some of the stuff that we're building, um, but we're not actually the hosting service. The hosting service is this decentralized network. I can give a little more color there. So uh, a couple things there we want to do um, that may be different than how other people are attacking this problem is we want to allow uh, users to store content across a variety of storage networks, right? So we're not committed to any one. IPFS is the first one that we are supporting. Uh, within IPFS, believe it or not, there are several <laughs> different private networks that are currently running, uh, in addition to just IPFS. Um, and uh, what we are going to do is offer easy deploy construction and pinning services, okay? So those are different than hosting. Um, and or I shouldn't say anything, I should say seeding, right? Because once you have a website up that has been accessed by enough people who are running their own nodes, then uh, the website is effectively stored across everybody's computer, at which point you don't need seeding services anymore. So um, that's kind of where we see our position as opposed to hosting providers. Obviously, we're in contact with a lot of hosting providers. You've probably seen Pinata, you've seen Temporal, there's, there's at least two dozen uh, that we've talked to. And all of these people are very eager to provide uh, like ways to help uh, ensure that your content is deliverable in different geographic regions across uh, the planet. So we see that as their business and not ours. So this question is about security. Uh, to every digital asset holder, we know that hackers are everywhere. Even banks experience hacks have to protect the user's account. Uh, so it's pretty critical that uh, our system is self-custody by design which means uh, you store your private key. So you notice you saw a plugin for MetaMask uh, or for other wallets. That means that you're storing your private key on your device. Uh, so even if our system is, is compromised for whatever reason, we don't have your key. No one can move your funds. No one can move your domain. Um, so we are not, uh, not putting ourselves in a position uh, where we are holding your assets, um, unlike a bank, of course. So, and two additional pieces of information there. Um, so we're, we are still working on the mobile app. We were actually approved on the mobile app last October. Uh, and then we decided to keep it internal so we could update it to support Dark Crypto because we do that launch is going to be coming out soon. So I'm hoping that will get out there sooner rather than later. The goal of that is to make it easier for people to claim their domain so they can keep it self-custody, right? And we really want to encourage people to take all their names into their, into their own hands because that's the way they're safer. Um, Another piece that I think is important is to look at the overall security model, right? So uh, it's just basically the same difference between having an exchange 
where it's a custodian like Coinbase or having a, a decentralized exchange. Um, and I, I'm like on the names right now, but there's lots of them out there where each person is holding their money. The difference is, uh, you know, Coinbase is sitting on several billion dollars in assets. So they're a huge target for hackers. Whereas the decentralized exchange, it's every single individual that's owning their own account. So um, that means that the uh, attack value, right, for breaking any one user is significantly less. Um, and that in itself provides a level of safety. Uh, and that's kind of like the whole point of self-custody. And, and the more people who are self-custodying their assets, uh, the um, less of a honeypot there is for someone to try to come in and hack. So we're, uh, the best thing you can do is take your assets in your own custody. If you have like 10 or 20 domain names, uh, it's very unlikely for someone to target you out of, <laughs> you know, out of the whole batch uh, for a low value like that. Whereas, again, compared to something like a custodial exchange like Coinbase where they have a billion dollars, I'm sure that there are teams working uh, constantly trying to figure out how to hack uh, Coinbase's uh, uh, giant giant pot of gold there. These are all great questions. We're gonna keep going through through, but uh, hang on with us because we're also gonna do. do uh, we're also gonna take a pause. And so will you, will you all be putting meetup meetings in major cities? Uh, no immediate plans for this, but I uh, see so the next question is is where's the UD office? Uh, so we have an office in uh, San Francisco in Soma. It's actually in kind of a little uh, crypto hub. Uh, so we'll definitely be doing some uh, meetups there. We also do do some whenever there are conferences in San Francisco. Uh, so we'll make more announcements about those. But yeah, definitely get, definitely doing some in-person stuff. We'd love to meet everybody. Uh, if I sell a domain, what happened with my wallets and addresses? So I'm assuming you mean the information that you attach to your domain. So right now in our software, you have like a setting where you can uh, erase all of your, uh, unattach all of your addresses and your IPFS hash, or you can send it with the information attached. So it's kind of up to you. Yeah, and I'll say actually the default setting is the information is erased on transfer, and uh, right now the keep information on transfer is actually just for users, so you, mm -hmm. you, you don't even see that. So it's always default erase right now. We're determining whether we want to keep it that way. Um, to answer that question a little bit deeper, uh, because when you record all your information on the blockchain, it will be there for forever. So someone will be able to uh, go read the blockchain and see previous history. But if you think about it, that's also a benefit for a domain name uh, transfer. Because one of the problems you have in the traditional domain name world is determining who the proper owner of this domain name is. And there's entire services like escrow.com, and their whole job is to basically verify title, and they, and they charge a big on that. Whereas because these transaction information is all recorded on the blockchain, um, it's much easier to do that programmatically. Uh, so we think that it'll make it much better, uh, like transfer escrow secondary market. So what are the advantages of UD to compete with competitors of the same model? Uh, we're not actually sure of any competitors with the same model as ours at this point. Um, we are the only company that I'm aware of that sells domains uh, forever, a uh, one-time fee. We're also uh, we've also spent the past year building out integrations. So I think those are um, those are the those are the key things that we're doing different. Um, as I mentioned previously, we don't see whatever is happening in the crypto world as the competition. Uh, Verisign, owner of .com, and the traditional domain industry is the competition. Uh, that's the big market, and that's the big market opportunity. Whatever's kind of happened in the crypto world, or might be happening in the future in the crypto world, is kind of uh, you know small potatoes compared to compared to that. Um, I'm going to offer a little comments on uh, some of the market competitors out there. So there's market competitors who are launching their own separate blockchain. I would just say that that's a completely different product than um, what Unstoppable is offering. And then I would say the other one that uh, has a similar genetic te technology history is ENS. And uh, we don't really do them. Sorry, I don't view them personally as a competitor. Uh, they, have a, they have a stated mission to really advance the Ethereum community and that's their focus, and that's different than, than our mission. Um, and we're really much more radical trying to attack this uh, existing ICANN system. Um, and we're a commercial operation, and we're going after that market uh, full force. So um, I hope that provides a little more color there. As UD thought of working with Tron and DLive streaming platform, this could help content creators get paid easily. Uh, so yeah, we actually announced a partnership with DLive pretty recently. Uh, we've been talking with several of their creators and talking about how we can also launch, uh, use BitTorrent as a storage network. So a lot of opportunities there. 
uh, a lot of streaming content providers there, a lot of video people there, a lot of people that are already getting paid in crypto. So it's definitely, uh, it's, a, it's a great market. I am a personal uh, believer in BitTorrent protocol. <laughs> um, so I'm, uh, we're, work, we're working on that, but obviously we only, there's only so much we can do at one period of time. As I said earlier, though, we are very interested in supporting multiple support network, I mean, sorry, multiple storage networks other than just IPFS, because uh, I think that's going to make it a healthier, uh, more competitive ecosystem for uh, hosting costs for end users in the long run. When are you releasing less than eight character domains? Uh, so announcements on this very soon. I think uh, there was another question about premium domains. So pretty earlier on, um, we had some stuff that we were doing in terms of uh, upgrading the e-commerce store, and uh, it led to the system being a whole lot faster. I hope you all notice that when you search around for domains. Uh, so this is coming very soon, and uh, look out for announcements. Uh, have you heard of FIO Foundation, and how does UD compare to them? Uh, we have heard of them. I believe they are not live yet. I can't speak to every piece of it, but as I understand, they are just doing wallet addresses and uh, aren't focusing on decentralized web. Uh, are IPFS features working now? Yeah, yeah, there's uh, hundreds of websites that are already live uh, and we're getting ready to share a bit about that in just a couple minutes. Um, I purchased a lot of .crypto and .zill domains. I'd like to know how to sell or how to use a domain for receiving crypto. Does your team have YouTube how-tos on how to use domains? Yes, I would check out the Unstoppable Domains YouTube channel. There are how-tos. Uh, in terms of transferring a domain, there's also how-tos for that. You can do it inside of the software, so I encourage you to check it out. And uh, if you still have questions, uh, I would uh, hit up. I would hit up an admin in Telegram, and they can they can help you out. I have a comment on website deploy. So we actually just soft launched the uh, website deploy feature to early uh, access users last week, and I think we went live with everyone maybe on Friday. Um, and since then, there before that there was zero. Uh, websites on .crypto, now there are 189, so that's in less than a week. And then on .zill, we're also showing uh, 175, so that means that we have over 300 websites now already up. Uh, and I would say that we probably doubled the number of websites in the last week just because of the launch of the templates. Uh, and expect, we're, we're getting feedback on the templates now, so if you have it, please provide it. Uh, and uh, we'll continue to iterate on those. Uh, there's um, Right now, we're kind of focused on the first uh, set of free templates. We're going to have an open source repo for other people to submit their own templates, and the best ones will actually, um, uh, in that repo, you'll be able to deploy from the command line, but we'll also take the best ones from there and put them into the application itself. Uh, so if people are looking to contribute for uh, website design templates, there'll be a direct, direct path for you to go that way. Can you explain more about security? Are your crypto funds safe with UD? Uh, we don't hold your crypto funds. Uh, we have nothing to do with that. All you are doing is attaching your wallet addresses to your domain uh, so that when someone types in the domain, they can pay the wallet you already have. Mm -hmm. So we don't touch your funds. Your wallet is sitting wherever your wallet is. Uh, you're just pointing your domain to that address and then getting paid. Can I send my assets using a network that does not yet support unstoppable domains to a network that is already supported using my domain address? Uh, so I think you're asking, I think you're asking about whether or not you can, so the only way to send a specific asset is if you add the address to your domain. So that would mean that you would need to go into our manage section and add a specific crypto address. If that currency is not yet supported by us, you would not be able to add that address. So if there's one that you would like to use that we're not currently supporting in your in our UI, please reach out and let us know and we'll add it and then you would be able to pay with that one. I want to take a pause here for a second? Yeah. Okay, cool. So uh, I missed the very first part of this. Um, do, what announcements did we give out to the community before we got started? We, we, have, jump in we have not done it yet. So yeah. let's, do you want to do the demo? Uh, yeah, let's do, let's do a few announcements. If you don't mind first, or if you don't want to, we can wait. We should, yeah. Okay, we should, we'll wait on those. And then uh, you, want to, you want to jump to the demo? Okay, and you've already got it loaded on your page. No, you don't. Okay, all right. And then, can they see your screen or not? <laughs> I don't know how this works. No, I don't think they can. 
All right. All right, well, uh, while we're waiting to figure this out, which I think Matisse is coming here to help us here, uh, but go to unstoppabledomains.com slash browser, and you'll see the browser for both Mac and Windows, and we're gonna about, we're gonna demo that right now. So I'm gonna just re share here. Not a pro YouTuber yet. Mm -hmm. no, I'm not sure if YouTube lets you but, uh, share a screen. No. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I think we're just gonna have to talk about it then. So everybody, please go to unstoppabledomains.com slash browser. Uh, you, yeah, let's type, let's it, type in. it in. So you are able now to go and, and download a browser that we created. And the way this works, is you can type a .zil domain, you can type a .crypto domain in, uh, and then you can see websites. Uh, another feature that is in the browser is there is an IPFS node, uh, which means that you, when you go to a decentralized website, can choose to seed the website, and then you're one of the ones that is storing and serving it up. Uh, so it means that if a website gets more popular, uh, it can also become more decentralized. Uh, so it's available for Mac OS and for Windows to start. Um, it is uh, an alpha version. <laughs> it is super buggy. Uh, I'm actually downloading it right here, testing it on my laptop. I haven't tested it on this one yet. And uh, here it goes. Looks like it's going to work good. Uh, and uh, we would like people to report issues on uh, to GitHub, GitHub issues. So we should also give them the GitHub leak. I'll get that in a second. Um, and we'll be following up. The code is going to be released under the MIT license. So we had the MIT license on there uh, last week. I took it down because we hadn't announced it yet. So uh, we'll probably we'll put that up probably later this afternoon. Uh, open to contributions. We've already had a few people reach out. We've already had a, a few uh, uh, great suggestions on uh, security side for IPFS websites. So uh, please keep those comments coming. It's actually a lot of fun. So I just downloaded the browser. <laughs> this is a gangster way to do this. Here, one second. So yeah, so I just went to, I don't know if you guys can see this at all, but unstoppabledomains.com slash browser, right, in order to download it. And then I click the download link and uh, I'm on my Mac. So this is what the browser will look like uh, when you guys open it up. It is a Chromium uh, clone, so that's its genetic history. Uh, so it'll work just like Chrome. If you want to look up a regular website, for instance, um, you'll have no problem doing that <laughs> inside the browser as it exists. You'll notice at the bottom that there is a uh, notification bar in yellow that says IPFS node uh, not running, right? And then you can click and go into the settings. Um, inside the settings, and I'll actually do a second here since I've got everyone's attention. We have a couple different ways. Oops. Uh, let's go back to the settings page. A couple of different ways for you to uh, read from the blockchain. Uh, sometime in the near future, we'll also have an ability for you for you to read from a local node. Braden was working on that this weekend. He's just been super busy. But you can choose to uh, either read from Infura. We have our API here. We also have Cloudflare uh, and Infura down here to load the uh, the images from. We're going to add Pinata here as well. So this settings dashboard will get more complex. Um, but we're getting to the point, and we already are very close. Right, where uh, websites that you have will be hosted by the users who visit your website. So one of the uh, genesis for this idea was, hey, you know, when you're like browsing a news site, like, hey, uh, you know, pay to subscribe or whatever, and then people tried micro tipping, and then they were like, oh, pay two cents to see this article. And I was like, you know, what would be cool is if you went to a website to visit it, and it said, hey, uh, it, to see our website, to see this article for free. Uh, then see see the article, right? And that was kind of the, the idea. Uh, we took a lot of good ideas from the DAT browser. People don't know this, but there's about 100 minor browsers out there uh, that we're reaching out to, right? Um, so we're taking the best ideas we can from them as well uh, and integrating them in. And as you'll see on the Unstoppable Domain slash browser page, there is already uh, something like, uh, we already have some linked where you can see people uploaded full files, uh, videos, um, and there's actually some, some businesses we've already ported over 
uh, to store on Dock Crypto. We expect to see more of it. So I can't wait till we hit a thousand websites. Uh, we're on our way, even within the first week. And uh, so everybody, please play around with this. If you don't mind, please don't post this on Twitter and things like that. We're trying not to do a public release yet until uh, you all tell us what sucks about it and we spend a little bit more time building out guides and all that stuff. We want to kind of wait to, to tell the world until it's a little bit better and also until we've got more websites to show off. So I know there's about there's hundreds of websites already out there, but please please keep on building. Yeah, and um, so just as an example, this is a community built website, uh, and this is one of our early access beta users. They were able to put this together in under an hour um, using the templates tools. So and there's actually a video on the page for Ensemble Domains. Um, domains.com slash browser. And I actually done by Matthias and it's actually quite good. Uh, and let's see if we load. Yeah. And I would actually just go right there and watch that guy. And I think in like three and a half minutes or whatever, Matthias will walk you through, hey, you get a domain name, perfect. And then you can use the templates, sorry, domain name, attach cryptocurrency addresses, use the templates, upload some photos, uh, edit your text. Uh, and then deploy, and then we do the seeding for you, right? So that's what we were talking about earlier. People are like, are you gonna be a hosting service? Uh, the answer is no, but we are gonna be tool service, right? So all the things you need to do to get that website up there, um, we're gonna help you do it. And uh, where are we gonna go with this? We're just gonna respond to community feedback and figure out where people need help. We also just implemented a My Website section on the website, uh, and uh, you, we, we may need to, I'm, I may, it may only be early release, but there should be a My Website section, and uh, that'll be out there soon, right under my domains. That'll, um, and our goal will be to make that much more self-explanatory for like the website deploy process. Uh, and I see there are questions about websites to check out. There are links, I believe, on the slash browser page for some websites. Uh, and there's also, you know, I would also just check in with the community. There's going to be more and more resources for uh, for finding those. Um, yeah, I can point that. So at the bottom, it actually says featured websites here, and this is on the same browser page, just scroll down a little bit, and you can take a look. Uh, I think we've just got nine or 15 there, let's see. Oh, and before I forget, shout out to ViewBlock. So let me pull that up too. So ViewBlock actually has all these things listed. Uh, and let me pull that up too. And you just go to ViewBlock.io. And ViewBlock is the first person to do this, but we expect several others to do it. Just click on the unstoppable domains. Uh, icon on the front page there. So again, thank you, ViewBlock. Please show ViewBlock some love. They've been doing a lot of great work for us. And you can actually just toggle here to see the IPFS websites. You can see there's 175 on .zil. If we go over here on .crypto, there's you know 189. And you can scroll through uh, and just check out uh, all the different websites that people have already posted. Uh, there was a question about Linux. Don't know how to answer. Oh, yeah. So right now. Uh, we have, we're focused on Mac support, uh, and if you put up a pull or a GitHub issue, then we're looking for a, we're currently looking for a full-time maintainer for the browser, either internally or, or also looking to hire. This is an open source uh, browser project. It is, we actually, in the repo, it's called the demo browser, and we should drop that uh, repo link, hold on. Uh, let's see, on Supple Domains, and then it should be, let me look up the repo link here so we can drop to these guys. One second. Yeah, so it's it's under our, our repo on GitHub Unstoppable Domains, and it's the unstoppable-demo-browser. Uh, so um, our focus on this has just been getting the V1 out so people can play with it. It does work on Windows, and it also works on Mac. The bugs are mostly associated with reading the files off the P2P network. So in the settings section, I found that uh, the Infura API to be uh, the most stable between Infura and Cloudflare. You can also directly download Zilliqa and um, Infura API on the other side of that. So uh, those are where most of your problems are gonna be when you experience it. Again, back to Linux. If you're interested, submit a GitHub issue. If you have some just suggestions on uh, what we can do there, uh, we'll take a look. Once we have a full-time maintainer for this, and it's gonna take us a couple months to find the right person, either promoting internally or uh, hiring externally to work full-time on this browser, um, then we'll have a much better project organization. So sorry about that. Uh, we're doing the best we can with the resources we have. 
the most important thing for us here is that we wanted uh, we wanted you all to start playing with it, and we wanted to make sure that as these websites were coming out, people had somewhere to go to check them out. So we wanted to make sure that there was something. This isn't the only answer uh, for the browser market. You know, we are also our primary focus is uh, getting integrations with major browsers. We also think that this can inspire them. Uh, there's stuff that's that, uh, that that's working inside of this browser uh, that, that you know, hasn't really existed before. A, a way to look at decentralized websites, view decentralized websites, and a way to at the same time see them and make them more decentralized as you visit them. Uh, that's kind of new. So we hope that this inspires other browsers to do the same. It's the first time um, IPFS uh, DAT browser did it with .dat files. Uh, a while back, and we're the first ones to implement this, the same type of functionality for IPFS. We're also the first ones to have the easy click, um, so you run your own node on you know, within the browser itself. I think they don't know who it was. Um, all right. Well, so that was uh, that was kind of the big news. I, you know, I'm sort of uh, keeping an eye out for questions related to the browser. Um, otherwise, I think that's, uh, I think that we're ready to wrap up here. Um, any last things you want to, you want to chat about, Matt? Um, so I, I guess another comment on the browser again, it is, it is intended to be MIT open source license. Uh, it's got to publish that. And we are actually sending, uh, browsers to this repo to go check it out, um, so that they can steal our code, right? Cause we're telling them like, we would love for you to, uh, implement blockchain domains in Google and Mozilla, right? Uh, and here's how you can do it, right? And then they can see the code. There's actually a lot of technical challenges that are kind of a little hidden behind the scenes. For instance, like cross-site uh, cookies, right? <laughs> like origin uh, issues there, because um, IPFS doesn't really care about any of that. Uh, so there's some technical things that need to be figured out before uh, these types of things are gonna go um, super mainstream, but I do think that there's a market there already. And so we want to get it out there and get some feedback sooner rather than later. All right. So uh, two last things. We're going to be at ETH Denver uh, February 13th and 14th. We're going to be demoing the browser as well as other IPFS tools. Uh, so if you're going to be there, come say hi. Come check it out. Otherwise, you know, watch it on the stream. Uh, and then also wanted to do one reminder about Coinbase. So we shared a tweet uh, at the beginning uh, we would love it if you all would please uh, tweet at them, uh, let them know that you want them to support uh, unstoppable domains, blockchain domains. Now's the right time to do it. Uh, we'll drop that link in here one more time. And uh, thanks a bunch. Thank you, guys. Thanks, everybody.